everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I did a recording for Art Joy of Sharing on Facebook yesterday, and this morning I feel so inspired. I need to come up with a cover for my monthly, my monthly journal that I do every year. Well, the last couple years. Um, I decided that this, the um, Ulfa mat that I cut up, is not the most desirable cover that I like to have this year. So I forgot that I have material that was gifted to me that is from the Seth Apter collection. So I've decided that I'm going to make book cloth out of this and I'm going to cover my calendar with um, Seth Apter's material. Um, it was suggested in the um, in the discussion yesterday that we filmed that I use book boards, you know, cut a book apart and use the front and the back because I'm going to Coptic stitch this. But I don't have any right now. And really, I don't want to go and scour around the world to find, and find that stuff. So I'm going to rummage through my cardboard bin and see if I can find something that's sturdy enough to take the abuse of a calendar being pulled off the shelf, put back on, off the shelf, but, you know, every day for the next 365 days. But I am tickle pink that I got gifted this material, and I am going to use it to make a book that I will live with and love for the next year of 2024. So, stay tuned. Alrighty, the next step is to make this material under here more sturdy. So I'm going to make book cloth out of it. I have some kind of iron on interfacing. It only has glue on one side, which is fine with me. So I think I do not have an ironing board. I know, don't faint. I left it at the um, another house and forgot to bring it over here. So I'm going to iron, put a towel down, I think, and then clear off my workspace and I'm going to iron all this material at once so I don't have to do this more than one time and then whatever scraps are left over I can make mini books with. I'm trying to multitask here for the purpose. I know this material is not cheap. I, I, I know it's not cheap and I want to make the most of this material that I can and I'm going to cut my calendar book out of it and like I said whatever's left over I will um, make mini books out of or something with them. I will not waste this material after I have put this interfacing on it. Once it is ironed on here, it'll be more stiff and it'll have a little more oomph to it. Then I will go look for a board to or boards to glue it on. And then I will determine how many holes that I want for the Coptic book. And I will take a Dremel tool I'm not going to use, um, I'm not going to use the big bite or any of those things. I think I'm going to use a Dremel tool through the chipboard because once you put this on it, the chipboard, a front and a back covered material, I think the chipboard is really going to be hard to poke a hole in with those things. So I am going to take a Dremel. I'll mark the holes and I'll take a Dremel and I'll drill, I'll drill through these. Um, the other, other calendar has eyelets in it or grommets whatever you want to call them and I did sew this with uh, some kind of a uh, heavy linen and thinking that I might want to put the eyelets again because this is held up really well from being open and closed for a year so I think that putting the eyelets in it on something that's open and closed frequently is probably a better idea for the wear and tear on whatever the thread is that you use on your book. So I will do the eyelets again. And then I will make um, some adjustments to what I'm going to do with my book. I'm not sure that I will divide my book up into months with... Um, craft cardstock like I did here. I will use computer paper again. That's a given. Um, I will not um, do the 
business here with the, oh, what are they called? I can't remember. Anyway, the things that are bumpy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put this again in the book. I don't, it didn't serve me for what, how I journal. This is my new granddaughter, so that's why those pictures are in there. Um, I am going to repeat this. I'm going to go ahead and run 12 of those off because I want to use those every month. Um, and this year I'm going, this next year, I'm going to try to learn to not put all my photos at the bottom of the book. Maybe they should be some up here, some in the middle, some at the bottom, and rotate my writing around so that not everything, this right here, you see here, is photos. That's why it's so fat here. At the top, it's not bad if you're just going to write in it. it. It's perfect. But if you add photos from some kind of a, you know, photo program or whatever, photo paper, it does tend to bulk the book up if you put everything at the bottom. That is a lesson I learned. So this time, I will try to spread my photos throughout the whole thing and try not to do everything at the bottom. So... That's the plan. I probably will fast forward through a lot of this stuff because you guys have seen me make journals like a thousand times. But I thought it was worthy of going over this after our um, recording yesterday for Art Joy of Sharing, talking about was I going to do this again for 2024? My answer is always a definite yes. This is not a quick process. It's a little time consuming, especially the Coptic stuff. But... It lasts for a whole year. It, it's a year-long project that I have committed to, and I have done really well doing it. I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot from it. There's lots of things in here that I will not do this time because I think I did not use this stuff. Like, I thought I would use these. I did not. I put paper in them, walked away, and forgot it was in there. So there will be none of that in there. So this will probably be strictly documentation of what I did. And there will be no more of these to slip pictures in. It's going to be this thing right here. I think this is the easiest for me. And this is the thing that I probably will stay most committed to. All right. So let me get the iron out and the towel and go to town. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time to iron the material onto the backing because the backing has tiny extruded, extruded little dots of glue. And if you just kind of pretend like you're ironing, that's not going to cut it. You need to leave a dry iron. Now, some of them will tell you steam, but I think the majority of them tell you no steam because you don't want it wet. Um, <clears throat> so you have to put your iron in one spot. And leave it there and let it get really hot so that the glue melts onto the material. And you will feel a difference in the material when you iron it. It, it feels, I, I don't know how to explain it, it has more resistance because you it's thicker. And I think that you can feel... I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, so the material feels different once the the cloth has melted to it or melded to it. Um, I ironed one side, then flipped it over to do the other side because I'm using my desk and my desk is not a wide surface. But when I flipped it over, I noticed around the edges on the other side, the first side I did, that they did not, I did not leave the iron in one spot long enough for the glue to melt to the material. And so I had to go back and re-iron it. 
Now I have it on a dry cotton setting. The iron does not like it if I don't, you know, go up, go up and down. It wants to shut itself off. So I've had to keep lifting up to tell it, yes, I'm still ironing, Goober. <laughs> so you have to, ooh, that's hot. I have to leave it in one spot to make sure that glue sticks because I don't want to do this more than once. Once I iron this, I want to be done with this. Um, and another tip, when you have a lining that is larger than your material, you really should cut it all off even with your material because if you run your iron over this, this is strictly little glue dots and it will stick to your iron and that's not a good thing. Um, let's see, this is an old iron so the stuff is starting to wear off on it. But I like this iron, it works well. Um, and if you, if you get the glue stuck to it when you iron, you definitely need to clean it off later once it cools down because it will ruin your iron and it'll make it harder for you to iron the next time and possibly when you put it on some other surface, that glue will come down on your clothing. So you don't want that to happen. I think I'm done ironing. I let it cool off before I start cutting it up. So I just want to make sure the glue has stuck, but what I do is I kind of shake it around to see if there's any loose edges. And the worst place for me to try to remember to get the stick is on the edges. This edge right here is the edge that I first started with, and it did not stay down. So I had to go back over the edge and re-iron it because I could see there was a gap when I picked it up to turn it around. I think we're done. So... Well, I go rewarm my coffee for the third time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let this cool off and go look for some book board. I'm going to whip out my computer paper and get started on my book. Okay, this is basically the end of part one. This is what's going to come for part two. I have found two scrap pieces of board in my supply and they are very thick. Um, I think think this would be considered to be heavy duty chipboard although they came off of I'm thinking they were part of I don't know some kind of oh this came off the back of um, a tablet of some kind of paper like uh, watercolor paper mixed media paper this was in a tablet and I think this one might have been the same thing, but a different brand. It doesn't really matter because it's going to get covered up. But I'm going to need to um, use my heavy-duty paper cutter to get through this stuff because it is very thick. And I debated whether or not to use a cereal box, but because of the wear and tear that I put on it, I decided that maybe it would be better that I used a more sturdy material than just a cereal box. Mm -hmm. Lord knows I have enough of them, but I thought that this stuff would be more appropriate. So in the next video in part two, I will um, come back with these cut to size, which I think I'm going to try to make the same size as this one because this is a nice size to handle. And like I said in the AJOS video, I do not take this out of my house because the bulk um so i i think this size i think it this is a five by seven or close to it and if i don't screw up cutting cutting i i have enough of this one and i certainly have enough of the whiteboard and i will go ahead and cut so stay tuned for part two and i will see you guys in the next video and hopefully i will finish my cup of coffee